HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Steve Brossman. Steve is a nine times Amazon bestselling author in marketing and sales and former TV show presenter. He's created several six and seven million. uh, Let me try that again. He has (laughs) created several six and seven figure multinational businesses has spoken in 15 countries and trained over 65,000 professionals and business owners to stand out in their market. Steve now focuses on helping business owners, sales professionals, and entrepreneurs with the art and science of virtual selling, attracting and converting quality clients without pushy sales techniques. Thank you so much for joining me today, Steve. Well, I'm going to give it away and say, good day, everybody. How are you all? And <laughs> it's lovely to be here, Diane. Lovely. It is lovely to have you here. And all the people who listen to this podcast know that I am a huge advocate for non-pushy sales techniques. So, but, you know, we, we are of like mind and I cannot wait to learn from you. So we will get this rolling. Look, I'm just listening back to what you just said on my intro there. I'm a nine times best-selling author and I help people with sales. It seems I end up doing things that I never set out to do. I, I really didn't like writing books, but I've ended up writing quite a few. And I've always avo- avoided being known as the sales trainer and the sales person. But I guess because of my dislike of the pushy sales, I've ended up helping people do it a better way. So um, it's a, it's you know, another typical Aussie uh, term. It's a boomerang approach. Ah, right, right. It is interesting, isn't it? You you sort of prove the the philosophy that you teach that if you're not pushy and you just you know focus on value, then you end up selling. Yeah, the the. The, the back pocket guide that I've, uh, I've put together and the evolution of, um, of selling that I've come through, it, it is a journey and it just doesn't happen. And a lot of people, they get into a sales conversation or they get into a sales process thinking that if I just give them enough information, they'll make an informed buying decision that they're going to buy from me. Now, that is absolutely incorrect. It's not going to happen. Perhaps in the old days, but these days with the ability of people to compare you to so many other people. And and here's a statistic, and I'll I'll probably throw a lot of stats because I've been immersing myself in the, the neuroscience behind selling and, and what it means to 
you know, have somebody buy from you. Three years ago, people would actually click online around about 4.5 other people. They would compare you to other people because they can, the click of a mouse, they'll compare you and your businesses to other people. What are you doing to stand out? What are you doing to attract and, and connect with those people? Now it's over 12. Wow. The last three, yeah, the last three years, we've been spending more time online, more time at home, more time being able to compare. And this is B2B businesses as well. So they're comparing you. You, you just can't get out there and say, here is everything that I do. Here's why I'm good. Now, this is why you should buy me. That, that's what I call the old present and pitch present all the good reasons you know a lot of people say the value the the features not the uh, the benefits not the features all of that and then pitch it's not going to work and we'll dive deeper into what are some of the better ways to do that very shortly yeah it's really great I, I completely agree with you that that it doesn't work um I I'm curious you have this thing called the brown box syndrome <laughs> and I am very curious as to what that is <clears throat> The, the brown box syndrome is unfortunately, and, and science has come out and said this just uh, in May this year, there was a study done saying 88% of businesses and business professionals know that the competition provides a similar product or service. 88% of businesses, marketers and salespeople don't believe that they confidently and adequately display and communicate their point of difference. So that's 88% that feel as if they're providing and looking and feeling the same as everybody else. And I wrote the brown box syndrome nine years ago, and it's all about looking and feeling, <laughs> tasting and sounding the same as everybody else. If you call yourself a coach, a consultant, a trainer, um, you know, a, a planner and advisor, whatever it is, if you call yourself by your title or your occupation or your category you are a brown box it's not until people unwrap the box and find out what's in there that there could be gold inside but unfortunately you're sitting on the shelf the same as everybody else and it's so topical that i'll give you this next analogy because imagine in the Christmas tree and we could easily imagine it right now there's all of these brightly colored presents under the tree and one brown box. Which present is going to get unwrapped <laughs> last? And people brown will box. look at it and think, well, yeah, I know what comes in brown boxes, but the other key thing, and you take this away as a business owner and professional, that the person didn't think enough of the content to spend time wrapping it to stand out. Huh. So if you call yourself, yeah, a coach, a consultant, a trainer, um, you know, a planner, a broker, whatever it is, whatever your profession is, if you call yourself the same as everybody else, it's perceived that you haven't valued yourself enough to work on how you communicate and stand out enough to, uh, to communicate with other people. And they will treat you like a brown box and, you know, bad luck. You generally will end up competing on price. That, yeah, right. I get it. Thank you for that. Okay. So talk to me some about buying energy. What is it? How do salespeople, how should they deal with it? Okay. This is going to be a little bit of a journey. So please okay. feel free to jump in and ask questions as I go, but I'll, I'll just go through. And it actually starts with the brown box because it starts with the first connection with you, whether it's online, whether it's your website, or whether it's at a networking event. Now, the buying energy of going to deal with a brown box, I'm going to talk to another mortgage broker, another financial planner, another business coach, another life coach, I'm going to talk to another. Your buying energy isn't that high. It could be the same as somebody else, another four, five, six, eight, ten 10 people. So your buying energy is low. And then what then happens is the typical scenario is there's a connection of some description. They might send out some information, some more information about them. Hey, read about me, about me, about me. And 
booking for that dreaded discovery call or that strategy energy call like every man and his dog these days has been told to well you book somebody in for a discovery call well the issue with the discovery call is everybody knows it's a sales call it, it huh. doesn't matter what profession i'm going oh, i'm going to book you in for a discovery call discover what stats have shown that by calling it a discovery call or even just a strategy call it actually lowers the buying energy 37%. Your buying resistance goes up. You're sitting on your hands, you're sitting on your wallet and say, this person better be good. So the first part of the call is actually resurrecting the, the, the actual energy. Whereas let's go back to the beginning again and you're positioned yourself as a leader or an authority or something. If you're doing something and you're getting results with your people, and you package up your system the way that you do things in a way that is particularly unique. You're the creator of that. And I help people build their blueprints, build, build their communication. So if all they are the, you know, the creator of the, you become a the, not an A, not a consultant, a the. So that elevates the buying energy. I'm talking to somebody who's done something, even if it's a book or some videos, I'm the, I'm the creator creator of the XYZ video series that you can see on YouTube. When you've created something and you package it in a way, you become an authority on what it is that you do. Here's, here's a quick tip for them. A lot of people out there, and you've told me you've got some wonderful small business owners and professionals, think, oh, but, but I'm not the best in the world. I can't, be, I can't be an authority. Well, the first thing, there's two things in here. An expert, which is what a lot of people say, you gotta do your 10,000 hours to become an expert. And that's great, you do. An expert knows something, an authority is known for something. Huh. Now you guys, you guys out there that are listeners right now, what are you known for? What is it that your people say that you do so well? Package what you're known for up and become the authority on that. So that's that. The other thing is you don't have to be the best in the world. You just have to be the best in their world. So take the stress out of, you know, oh, I've got to be you know, a global guru to be known as an authority. No, just even in your own small local community, if you're the person they go to for the thing, you're the authority on that thing. So own it and use that in your communication. So that elevates the buying energy because you're talking to somebody special. Then it's a, a, a cultivation, not qualification. I'm going to cultivate somebody to work with me. So I'll send them some information. There'll be some videos in there. And ideally they'll get to know me as a person and get to know, like, and trust, but really, create a relationship with me and make a decision. And that decision is, this guy's got some awesome stuff. I can't wait to talk to him or he's an idiot. <laughs> and I don't care. Just make a decision as it stands by doing this. And by the way, cultivation is three things, watering, fertilizing, and pruning. And so you give them information so that they'll think this guy's great or this guy's not, and they can take the next step. Once they've read that or watched the videos, the buying energy goes up even more. Here's the thing. Then you, if they want to call, book them in for a high perceived value call. So give them something in the title of the call that is a perceived outcome. Now, at the end of this, you guys get access to the art and science of virtual selling it's a it's a mini book it's got some videos in there it's virtually a workshop in a book and in there there's going to be a link if you feel like it for a prominence and persuasion review if you want to book in and have a call with me we will review how you're standing out in your marketplace and have a look at your sales flow now i hope that excites somebody a little bit more than, hey, let's book in for a discovery call where I'm going to try and sell the hell out of you. Yeah. So yeah. title, even if you just repackage your discovery call title into a high perceived outcome 
And then there's a couple of other little tricks. And generally I'll send somebody, whether it's a, a gener generic video or a personalized video, and it could be as simple as, um, hey, Diane, see you've booked in for a call on Thursday. I can't wait to have a chat. Oh, by the way, I've had a quick look at your website, your LinkedIn profile. Man, I've got some exciting ideas for you. I can't wait to share with you. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Love and kisses, Steve. Well, I'll leave out the love and kisses. Um, <laughs> so, Di, if you got that, would you be a little bit curious about turning up? Yeah, of course. Yeah, two people in seven years have missed an appointment by going through this little process. Could you imagine what a, a, a person's uh, productivity, sales rate, everything goes, if they implemented this into their system and the show rate, a lot of people say, how do I get people to turn up to a call? Or oh, increase the buying energy. Don't treat them as if they're a, a commodity you want to sell to, nurture them, cultivate them. And then when it's time, you get them as excited as all heck to get on the call. I had one person apologize and rebook three times because they didn't want to miss out on a free call because oh. they perceived the value so much. So that's the buying energy. Now, wouldn't it be great to get on a call with somebody who's who knows about you, who's made an informed decision a couple of steps along the way that they want to do things with you. They actually get on a call excited. The call then is not a sales call. It's, it's totally different. So got any questions on that so far? Because then we can step onto the next bit, which I'm sure you guys are going to love. No, I think that is great. I'm, I'm totally with you so far. Excellent. Now, if I was in a live room um, when I could look at the people and I would say, how many people here love with a passion selling themselves? <laughs> and you'd have about 1%, if not 2%, sort of put their hand up and look around and think, I hope you're not looking at me because I actually do like selling myself. And the rest of them would actually sit on their hands. And I would ask, well, how many people like helping people and serving people? And everybody would put their hand up. I said, great. So my definition of selling is professionally servicing other people's needs for a mutually beneficial gain. So first thing, professionally servicing, mutually beneficial gain, they get what they came for, you get paid. It's as simple as that. Now, over the last two years in studying all this cognitive neuroscience and human behavior and why people buy, I've designed that there's actually three levels of influence in selling. There's the imposed influence. That's let me tell you everything about me. Let me tell you why I'm good. Let me tell you why you should buy from me. That's a typical sales presentation. Right. And we all hate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it with a passion. And there's the next one is the collaborative. Let's work together. And when I help people build their blueprint, which is the schematic of how things will work and the system of being able to deliver results for their clients in a visual way, and they work on it, they write on it, they scribble on it, they put all the different extra values on it, that's a tool to collaborate on. And I say, what's the best way to get, on, get people on the same page as you? Have a page to get on. And by having that shared blueprint in front of them, we say, well, yeah, what would it mean if we did this in your business? Yep. And how would that affect your business? Great. Um, on a monthly basis, you know, time, money, et cetera, and then calculate and annotate it, write it down. So all these different numbers and values are adding up in front of them. And that's collaborating, not on a solution, but quantifying. I got a real cool I hope people got something to write down in a second because I'm going to give them something that's really cool and works really well. So that's the collaborative influence. And I guess everybody on the phone here who loves helping people would feel very comfortable with that. And when you've got something visual that actually outlines the system, so you sell the system, not yourself. When you're doing it correctly and the way we teach people, is you never ever again have to say, hey, I'm good, buy me. Not 
that's what you'd say, but you never feel as if, hey, they're buying you. You get to the end of it, and if you've done it right, I say, well, by the looks of it, whatever we're about to do is going to deliver these values, whatever they are, which will be significantly greater than what you're about to pay. Does it make sense we actually get started sooner rather than later? And because they've collaborated on that, they've probably gone up to the next level of influence in their own mind themselves because they want to buy, which is self-influence. And when you see value, implementable value, not value of the box of stuff that you're going to do for them, but the implementable value, significantly greater than what you're about to pay, then they often ask to buy before you even get to the end. And as a sales professional, damn it, I love people. And I do like people because about 60% of the time now, people stop me and say, Steve, this is great. How do we get started? Started. So that, that's a real great way of, um, of actually taking the stress out. So that's the, the three levels of influence. And one thing that you may want to do, uh, listeners, as you're going through your conversation, am I presenting and pitching or am I collaborating and confirming? Mm-hmm. Am I doing the imposed influence or am I doing the collaborative influence? And that's there's an art to that as well. So any questions on that, Di? No, I, I am totally on board with that. I, I think that, you know, people get so tripped up with this big, that they have to have some sort of slick close. And, and what I heard from you was, no, you don't. When you're collaborating with them and you're walking down the road with them, you both come to the same conclusion. Yeah, so yeah, it's not about closing. It's about just agreeing to move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, here's a formula that um, I only finalized um, a couple of months ago, and it was doing some work with um, some really, really smart people who hook people up to wires and stress tests and skin measurements and all of the they they test absolutely everything in their neuroscience and how people react. And I thought this is the way you have, you structure your conversations so that you don't have people come up with objections at the end. One of the big things that sales trainers do is I'm gonna teach you how to pitch, I'm gonna teach you how to close, and I'm gonna teach you how to overcome objections. Yeah. It's like, ah, shit, I'd rather not have them. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry about that, but I just—I would just rather not have them. So here's the thing: if 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 your people would like to just write this down, D N Q C. D is for data or demonstrate. Okay. Data or demonstrate. So we're going to give you. I'm going to give you some information. I'm going to give you some data, or I'm going to demonstrate something. And then what would normally happen is I'm going to go on to the next bit. I'm going to demonstrate some more. Then I'm going to demonstrate some more. Then I'm going to demonstrate some more. I'm going to throw all this stuff at you. But you, you forget all of that. You know, by the time you've demonstrated you know, three things, I've forgotten the first and I'm moving on to the next. It's, it's, I'm not a part of it. Here's another saying. When they are involved, they invest. So when a, sale, a sales conversation should be like a tennis match. You hit some information over and you seek their feedback. And they hit the ball back and you hit it back over, you hit it back, you hit it back over, you hit it back. But most people just stand there and hit balls over the net. They run out of balls. Yeah. They've got all this stuff over there. Yeah. What am I going to do with all these balls here? I've got nothing to do. So the D is the data. Demonstrate it. Involve them as you're demonstrating. The N is narrative. Turn it into a story. Use it as a case study. Just how do we remember things? The other cool scientific reason for doing this is when you're demonstrating, presenting, pitching, I'm presenting to or at you on the other side of the camera or on the other side of the table or the other side of the room. Think back to one of your first ever stories that was read to you. Where and when was that? Was, was that at home with 
potentially one of your parents or yeah. other family members sitting beside you with their arm around you. Yeah. Use the story as an opportunity to walk around the side of the table, walk through the camera and to sit with them and tell the story with them. Involve them in the story. And it can only be a 30 second story will be enough. Now, the other thing, when you're telling a story about somebody, and I coach all my people to have all their hero stories ready. Now, the hero story starts at a point of objection or potential objection that the person may have. Now, I've given you some information that reminds me of a person we worked with you know, just 12 months ago and they were really worried about investing in the program they were concerned about their cash flow but as we worked through blah 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 the potential objection is i don't have money so we started the person where that person is thinking they are at right now took them through and within six months they were generating this 12 months they were doing this this and this now diane if we were to do this in your business what would that mean on a monthly basis of? So we've gone from the data, the narrative of how somebody else has done it and potentially overcome an objection that they've got in their mind. And then we go into the next one, which is the Q. And that's quantitative, quantify. So if we were put, put this in your business and cut this, did this, did this, yeah, on a monthly basis, what would that mean to you? And they then collectively with you would work out the implementable value. Well, if yeah, if we did that, that would probably save me X number of hours, do this, make more sales. And that would probably be an extra, let's just say 10,000 a month. Fantastic. Okay, let's just write that down. So that 10,000 a month, we're going on to the next one now, which is confirmed. So that's a high priority that we actually fix this. And it probably now that you know that we can do it for you know, we're going to generate ten thousand a month. That would be a high priority for you to have fixed right now. Is that is that correct? Yes. So within several minutes of one part of the conversation slash presentation, you've given them some information, you've told them a story, overcome a potential objection, quantified the value, and got them to confirm on the way through that they want that bit as well. And you just move on as a part of the conversation and have that written down. And if you do that flow throughout the whole conversation, you get to the end, do that three or four times within the presentation. You've got all this value you sitting in front. You've shown how you've overcome the objection that they may have had at the end already. So then it's a matter of, well, you get back to the end again. Well, Diane, by the look of it, if we put these things and from what you've said the value of that to you in your business would be x and you've said that it's a high priority does it make sense we get started sooner rather than later i don't know about you but that's not a real hard pitch no right right well because you're you're going with them and you're mirroring back what you've learned from them in connection to how they can get where they want to go. At this time, I'd like to take a sponsor break. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. And I'm sure you know that Audible.com has thousands of audiobook titles to choose from, but you might not know about the other content. There's podcasts, Audible Originals, guided meditations. Uh, my favorite thing is to be able to listen to different kinds of things all on the same platform. I think it's a time saver uh, and it's like a productivity uh, hack for me. I don't have to go jumping from one platform to another. Uh, so we're offering you a free trial. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, sign up for that free trial and then explore on your own. You know, check out the audiobooks, check out the other programs, see what really, you know, resonates with you. Interested in getting some help with your sales strategy? Pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. The other thing that is hidden in there is you're also empowering them to go from the collaborative to the self-influence. You've really, yeah. you know, you've really let them put the numbers down. You've, you know, from your numbers, 
and you basically you collaborate with them and you're confirming along the way confirm yeah yeah right. will this will this make you money save time stress etc in your business yeah is this a priority yeah, you're confirming along the way yeah yep this, this is great so the the reason that it doesn't uh, it, it feels good is because the, the basic selling started the minute that you were the authority. They've had the buying energy. They've got buying energy going into the conversations like, wow, I think this person's really got something for me. And then they get in there and then you have a collaborative conversation where you're leading them to give you the reasons why you, know, you should work there. And even the beginning conversations, we turn around as well. And if they've gone through the right process before, and a lot of people will just do the cookie cutter approach. Say, so tell me the three things that are holding you back in your business. Please tell me all the problems that you've got right now. You know, yeah, let me, yeah, you know, please tell me all these things. <clears throat> and that that's the old cookie cutter approach. It's just like, so, oh, you know, we're going to really drag you down. You tell me your problems. I'm going to aggravate them. Then I'm going to solve them. Whereas the approach that we take is if they've done all of that and they've gone onto the, the call um, looking forward to it and informed, it's a simple question. Hey, Diane, from what you've seen so far with the, you know, the back pocket guide and the, the videos that you've watched, what is it that you think I could best help you with and what sort of an impact would that make on you and or your business? Yeah, it's a big difference. That turns it around. It turns yeah. them around into talking about all the exciting things that we could potentially do together. And I had one guy that one of my earlier books, um, he'd got halfway through it. He contacted me, said, Steve, do you help, do you coach people? It was a high level <clears throat> um, personal performance and productivity and sales book. Um, and he said, do you help people implement what's in the book? I, I sure do. So where are you up to? He said, I'm halfway through. I said, read the rest of the book and let's book in for a call. So he went through and booked in for the call. I sent him the video, looked at where he was. And for the first 15 minutes, he was trying to sell me on why we needed to work together. <laughs> and virtually it was, <clears throat> excuse me, a bit of a frog in my throat for early in the morning here. Um, it was like, yeah, you know what? We can do that. And I've got a complete blueprint and system. Let me quickly take you through it and um, show you how we can achieve everything that you want to right now. And that was it. It was just basically, thank you for telling me everything that we need to do. Here's the system, the blueprint that we can do to achieve all that and how we use it. And, and let's go. And that's, that's how it was. So yeah, it's the old Jerry Maguire. You had me at hello. Yeah. <laughs> and, and really, it's not the hello on the conversation. It's the hello on probably whatever the first click of the mouse is. And that's where a lot of people fall down. It's like, well, they, they yeah. think the selling yeah. is the last 10 minutes of the conversation. A lot of people will say, look, you now your selling starts at the beginning of the conversation. Well, no, it doesn't. Selling is, to me, selling is an equitable exchange of value. That's it. Yeah, right. And, and, and that starts the minute that they meet you online yeah. or, or face to face. Well, so you, and you just made me think of another um area of this that I'd like to touch on uh, and, and that is because so many people are having to sell virtually um, and, and I think they're struggling with that because now they're not across the table from someone they're you know through the camera uh, that is that camera confidence it's pretty important isn't it <laughs> I wish you could see the smile on my face <laughs> <laughs> Look, and that, that is a huge thing. And a lot of people have been thrown into this world yeah. and they've been told, look, just get on Zoom and do what you've previously done. That's just not going to cut it. And I have been fortunate that I've 
got a background in over 20 years in TV and hosted my own TV show and exec mm. producer for Warner Brothers. And yeah, that, that's a pretty handy background to yeah. have. But I got to tell you right at the beginning, I sucked. I was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make people feel better. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I got on and I was doing my first TV appearance. And I thought they're going to tell me to tone it down, that I'm too excitable and over the top. And I went back to the edit suite as they're editing it all up. And I thought, oh, damn, that's boring. But what I did is I week after week after week after week, um, I got better and got better. But the thing that people have to realize is perceived lack of camera confidence mm -hmm. it, it comes across as lack of product confidence. Mm -hmm. So you've got, there's so many different things that you've got to have the camera at the right level. You've got to know that that little black hole is the face of the person, not over to the side, wherever you are. You, you're looking at that little black hole, but knowing what's going on at the other parts of the screen. You've got to know how to seamlessly click from one to another. You know, where I've said that um, when I'm collaborating with people on Zoom, and on whichever platform it is that we're using, I'm, I'm writing on the screen, I'm writing the values. And that technically in the neuroscience world is called annotating. When you actually write on the screen, even in a presentation, if you're doing the same presentation over and over again, but when you're highlighting writing, it draws people's attention to that spot. Attention and knowledge retention goes up 60% action at the end goes up three times just the mere fact that you're actually writing on on the screen and doing oh. things like that there are there are so many little nuances that people can learn and do and the other fact is that that little box that we're in yeah the the, the camera box where, where how do i use my hands it feels uncomfortable that my hands are really so close to my face but guess what that's where they are in the, the Zoom box. You, know, you can't use big arms anymore. How do you use body language? Body language is 55% of our communication and we're chopped and we're squashed into a box. Or as we are now, you can't even see me. Yeah. <laughs> so then we've got to go back to tonality. How do we keep people's interest? How do we spark their interest? How do we get them engaged just by the tonality? How do we you know, move the cadence along? There, there are so many little things that people can improve on, but there's some basics that if they just learn to use that right, their, their connection and communication, which will lead to conversions, will go through the roof. Is that information in the book the back pocket guide to yeah. the art and science of virtual selling there is a yeah. lot in there <clears throat> and the great thing is and there's two videos in there and when you you give them the link and when they they grab it they'll actually see me talking to them via zoom and and by doing some of the things that i do so everything that i do is, is i practice what i preach it's what i've been doing for years. The interesting thing is that I, I set up my first business in 1983 and it was a health club and lo and behold, if you build it, they don't come. You've actually got to do sales and marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I learned that. So I invested very heavily into a, a, a sales and marketing course just months after opening the doors and I fell in love with, with marketing. But interestingly enough, a lot of the things that I implemented into that business, which allowed me very early on to build multinational businesses out of a, you know, a, a small health club in the middle of Australia, they're the same principles that we use right now. Just the mediums have changed. Now, it's up to people to know, be good at what you do. Be really good at what you do but you don't have to spend any more time getting better at what you do. You have to learn how to, what is, what is it that I, I need to do right now to be able to connect and communicate and build relationships with my people? And 
and another thing that would be helpful for your people, and I know virtual networking has absolutely exploded. And one of the things, yeah, you know, if we go back to the brown box, evaluate yourself in your 30 second or 60 second chat. Do, do you say, hey, I am A, I do this, I help these people. I'll give you one thing. Your elevator pitch is not to inform. It's to intrigue. I would rather have people say, wow, that was interesting. I think I need to talk to Steve than, oh, I know exactly what he does now. Yeah, right. Are you just trying to tell them everything that you do and be compared the same as everybody else? Or do you want them to say, I'm going to grab that guy's details. I'm going to grab that girl's details because I, I, I believe I need to have a chat to that person. Yeah, I'm so glad that you said that. I, you know, people have that bizarre idea that they're supposed to be so eloquent in that that they're persuading someone to want to buy from them. And, and it's so not the case. I've had people connect with me from that, just from the energy. And, and sure. it's just like, they say, oh, I'm really not sure what you said, Steve, but I just loved your energy. Um, we should have a call. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, people, and that's the, again, one of the things when I do in my video mastery program is how to create that addictive personality. And we need, you know, to, to start people feeling right. how you make them feel. People don't buy what you do. It, yeah. There's a study from Michigan. They buy how you make them feel before during and after doing business with you right that's a huge point yeah so yeah. how do you make them feel before you do business how are they feeling sure satisfied fulfilled yeah you're doing a great job that's fantastic but also what is the experience right and then you've got to move them enough to want to talk to other people about you that's how you're going to build your business yeah. yeah. If if you do, do a good job, yeah, your referral rates will be fairly low. If you deliver an exceptional experience, your referral rates will be through the roof. Big difference. E you know, easy switch, big difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's and I was telling my son the other day. And it's really good because he's learning business and he's doing well. And uh, it must have been somewhere in school, um, high school. I came up with something that I wanted to live by. And I, I wanted to make people feel better, feel better at the end of an interaction with me than before. Every yeah. person, every interaction. People get off my bloody phone message. Steve, I just love your phone message. I, just, I wanted to ring it again. It's how do you make people feel? How do you create that addictive personality so they just want to hang with you? If they want to hang with you, chances are they're going to pay you. And that's the some of the missing pieces where people just don't get. You know, teaching textbook sales I'm not a textbook salesperson, but some of the results that my people get have been phenomenal because they learn to be more of them. They learn to create better relationships. They learn how to make people feel good. Yeah, and I'm talking at the top big level. I've got a guy that just is not, not that long. His first phone call after doing one of my programs did a half million dollar per month deal over the phone. Wow. Down to a person, a, a life coach, sold her first ever full priced coaching program. And nice. it's not because I've got all, all the right scripts and the heavy handed, this is how you pitch and persuade yeah. all those sort of things. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's not, it, it's how do, we, how do we get that person really want to do business with you and want to and trust you enough to invest in you. That's the difference. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Steve, th this has been so great. I appreciate all of this information. And I know yeah. um, that a lot of it is in the back pocket guide to the art and science of virtual selling. Will you please let listeners know, you know, how they can find you? I mean, the link for them to um, access the, yeah. the guide will be in the show notes, but how else yeah. can they find you? Well, the easiest thing is um, my current website is being revamped, but you can go to steveprossman.com. That's simple. And you know, I'm, I am old school. And if you want to drop me an email and ask me some questions, steve at steveprossman.com, I'll just reply straight away and um, we can start up a conversation. That's as simple as it is. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here and spending this time and listeners. I appreciate you as well. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.